Hello everyone and welcome back to Ratting Road. So it feels like an absolute age since the last video covering some layout progression. It's been at least a month now by the time I come to upload the video. I've done little bits on the layout over that time but not a great deal. Time on the layout has been really really limited uh, over the last few weeks uh, with the UK lockdown continuing to ease. Um, life for me has more or less gone back to normal. My job is in full swing and I'm absolutely flat out at the moment. So time on a layout has more or less gone back to how it was before, a couple of hours a night type of thing. So please excuse the lack of videos and that is more or less the reason why. I just do what I can when I can. It is a hobby at the end of the day for me. So um, I, nothing really more to say about that. But like I said, I have done some little bits on the layout over the last couple of weeks off camera. So I'll just show you, uh, show you those before I get into the main topic of the video. One of those things is I've added some oil spillages to the track. So um, there's some in shot around here and as it continues up here, I'll get closer soon. And I've also weathered the foot crossing here as well uh, with the airbrush. And I've just done little patch ups with ballasting. When I airbrushed some ballast went loose and I had to re-ballast a few areas. So I've done that as well. But if I just come up and show you close, just so you can see the oil spillages properly. So there's a pretty large splodge of it there and I, I use the Hatton's oil spill kit to do the oil spills and then I use the pigment wash that comes with it along with some uh, brown paint just to make it a bit less dark. I mean the oil wasn't full on black in real life. And then once I was happy I went over it with some gloss varnish just to give it that bit of a shine for fresh oil. So then if, we just, if I just come along here you'll see a bit more where it starts to ease to try and do it as slow as I can. So I haven't gone mad everywhere, but you get an idea. It is, I've kept it fairly light because modern depots now aren't absolutely caked in oil. So there's some more up the far end there. Put a couple of splodges in the siding as well, just to generate a bit of interest. And then we've also got some there in the point work as well. And then if I just try and pan along as gently as I can, so you can see. So now we're going to follow the road on the exit to the depot. So again, a little splodge there. It's like lighting isn't doing me any favors as usual. So some more splodges with the same sort of method and then it just eases out as it exits the depot. As per reality, so that's one thing I've done, the all spillages. And then something else I've been doing is adding these Gage Master frog juices. Uh, these are called the Auto Frogs. I can't remember the product code. Basically, with my points, I kept having uh, failures on the frogs because before they were controlled by my point motors, which are the Gauge Master Seep PM ones, and the built-in polarity switch on them is absolutely terrible. So they didn't. Even, I don't even know if they lasted me a year or it was just over a year maybe. So um, the alternative was to get these, and I fitted these to all of my points. So now my depot runs really nicely again and I can have a nice run around the yard soon. So I'd like to do a running session with that happening soon. So there's a couple there and then there's some all over the other points as well. So that's more or less what I've done over the last couple of weeks. As you probably saw, it wasn't a great deal of work, but again, because of how busy my life is now, I haven't just had the time to do much more than that. Um, I have worked on other things like building up some kits and you'll see and later on some other bits I've done for the depot. But today's video is going to be based on just detailing it. So I'll be basically just filling this whole area with um, you know, just some details. And I've got uh, plenty of ideas. Uh, I'll talk some of them through as the video goes on. So um, I'll just show you what now, what I've been making a start on already. Most of my time has been spent working on this Hornby container. It was a Hornby Musk Sealand container, which I bought at an exhibition. It came with a Hornby KFA wagon and uh, it was absolutely dreadfully weathered. So I attacked it with some thinners to remove a good 70 to 80% of the paint. And then um, if I just pop up a picture on screen now, you'll see what it looked like before I cracked on with the work. So what I've done is I've added some details like a CCTV camera there. That's from Scalmodel Scenery. There's a graffiti tag at the back, which is also from Scale Model Scenery. And then if we take a look inside the container, apologies, you won't be able to see much now, um, but I have made an interior for it. 
So you can see in shot, there's some shelves which go all the way back to, uh, to the back of the container. And then you can also make out a traffic cone there as well. And then that's just glued down on a, on a little piece of plastic card that's meant to represent the floor. And then you can just about make out where I've weathered the left-hand side of it to represent like where mud has been brought in from boots, etc. So you'll see the full interior soon, uh, later on in the video. It has got a light in there, like an interior light that lights up. And then if I just come up the top, you'll see that I've also put a floodlight in. Um, this floodlight's from Kites Lights, and I have bought uh, another load of lights from them, which you'll see later on in the video as well. And then I've just finished it off with covering it in some foliage and static grass and some scatter. As it's going next to the embankment, I thought it was quite appropriate to do that. And it also hides the wires for the couple of lights that I've used. And then if I come around the side, you'll see it's the same this side as well, but not quite as much. Um, it's a bit cheeky doing it that way, but it works. So I'll be putting this on the car park later on in the video and you'll see um, what it looks like all lit up. So first things first, I'm just going to paint all around the edge the brown colour and I'm just going to run around, basically create a boundary using some static grass and foliage. So the car park's already starting to look really nice, I think. Now with some, like the fence added and some other little bits and pieces, mainly like scenics and foliage. So I ran a couple of layers of static grass all around the depot in a little boundary, if you like, before I added the fence. The fence is a scale model scenery kit and so are the gates. So there's a couple of gates here, which are also from scale model scenery and one over there as well. So that gate is for access to the sidings and then the one in the previous clip was to access the car park. 
ran some bushes and foliage along the bottom of the hillside as well, just to create a bit of interest alongside the fence. Done the same on the siding side of the fence as well, all the way up to the top. And then I thought I'd make the, a small portion of the back of the car park derelict, considering it's next to an embankment, I think it quite a, it's quite appropriate. And it's also something that I don't often see modelled. I haven't actually seen it on a layout yet, but I'm sure some, there's a few that have done it. So I just done it by adding some couple of layers of static grass along with some woodland scenics gravel chippings. And then at the front, I just went over it with some dark weathering wash just to turn it down and blend it in with the concrete more. So I'm happy with how that turned out. Still need to fit in the foliage where I've painted the brown on this side of the fence. I'm going to still add a little bit down by the, on the concrete next to the fence, but I'm just holding off for now. And I'm going to address that later once I know where the backboard's going to go, because it's the backboard's going to continue along this way, but I don't know how far it's going to go yet. So I'm going to hold off until I know that. So I'm still yet to add some other detailing, like some general detailing, like the container I mentioned earlier, plus some other bits and pieces. And I'm also going to be adding some yard lights in as well. So I'm going to uh, just move on and carry on. So the car park is now starting to look even better than what it did before after the first round of detailing. So I'll just show you what I've done. So on the right hand side, we've got some pallets and a tire leaning up against the fence and then other bits like some scaffolding planks at the back with some small amounts of litter scattered around. So you can see it here better up close up. Then I've just scattered some tires around the place as well just to scatter it around. I did use the less is more approach when doing this and I'm glad I did. Essentially, I could always add more to it if I wanted to, but for now, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Put a traffic cone in the potholes. There's one there as well. Put a figure there just to see how it would look. I could always take it off if I wanted to. The, that container interior is still removable. So if I did want to take them out or add to it further, I can do. And I do have plans to put some more detailing around the doors. Got some lights in there now as well, and it's uh, lighting up the car park nicely. I may add one or two in the back of the car park, just so the derelict park can shine up a bit more as well. And then uh, do something with the lights to make them flicker a little bit, just for a bit of it added interest. I'll see how I feel. I've also got my container lights working now, so I'm going to demonstrate those. So the floodlight comes on and then shortly you'll see the interior light come on as well. Like so. Then there's that added flicker as well for the realism, which I thought was a real nice touch. 
and then eventually the interior light goes off and then followed by the floodlight. And this chip is what powers them. It's an Arduino nano chip and uh, at the moment it's just plugged into my PC as a temporary measure. It runs off the 12 volt DC supply but I do, will need to add a resistor just to um, calm it down a little bit and make it work better. So then the container lights are just wired to this, the terminals, and then they join for, through the negative feed, which then feeds back to this as well. Then I use a program called Arduino IDE, which is the special program to do all the coding for it. I won't go into all the detail. I did have a load of help from my good friend Elaine doing it, so a big shout out to him. It's something I do suggest learning though, it is pretty cool once you get used to it and get your head around it. Can certainly be quite mind boggling at first, but um, you know, just got to try and learn it and understand it. It really is pretty cool what you can do if you just put your mind to it. And there's certainly a few things I'll be trying out to, in the future using this. Still lots to do though, yet yeah. plenty more to be getting on with, so uh, can't stop now. Time to carry on. So I added some vehicles to the depot. You've got a Land Rover Discovery, or two of them actually, and then a Nissan Qashqai and then a Ford Galaxy. I thought it'd be cool just to modify the Galaxy so it had its boot open. I thought it, would be, it was the easiest vehicle to do out of all of them. And then, uh, as you can see, I added some shopping bags and a cardboard box and a boot just to make it a bit more interesting. And I'm not sure how well it's picking up on the camera, but I did add the gas struts as well, which are those two black uh, little metal rod-like things that hold the boot up as per real life. So it's just, uh, you know, it's all about the detailing in my opinion. Uh, it's not quite finished yet. I will be adding a, a figure underneath the boot as if he's unloading his car uh, for a driver who's starting his shift. And I'll also be putting in a high-vis jacket, a hard hat and the, and the driver bag as well and just choose what I think will be best. And then here we've got a Ford Transit and the driver unfortunately hit a pothole on the way in as he was late for work. So he's come back after he finished his shift I'll find out to find out he had a slow puncture. So uh, not very ideal for him at all and he's just checking out to see if there's any damage to his actual wheels. So he won't be able to get home for his lovely warm dinner tonight unfortunately. Feel a bit sorry for him really. But I thought that would just be another interest point in the car park. All the vehicles have been su suitably weathered as well. I particularly like the one on the transit as it bring brought out all the grooves and rivets on it, which I quite like. Also got Freightliner Phil there, just walking around, seeing if anyone's doing what they need to be doing. No messing around. We've now got some more details surrounding the container. So I've put some step ladders just in front of the doors along with some bins, with some scat, with some rubbish and some and a box just around there. I want to add to that area a little bit more with some actual black bin bags, 
possibly some more wheelie bin type stuff. So uh, all ideas for the future. Also put some more pallets alongside, but this time went for some uh, like a brown wooden, wooden coloured ones rather than the blue, just to give it a bit of variety. At the moment, I can't help but think everything looks a bit random, so I will be uh, possibly readdressing it in the future. I do want to add to it a bit more. For now, I'm happy to just to leave it just so it's got the start of some detailing there. Here's just an example of some little pieces of litter that I just scattered around the outside. It's a scale model scenery litter that I used on the disused footpath scene. And uh, as you probably saw in the time lapse, it can be really awkward to work with at times. A lot of the stuff on there is just incredibly small to the point where you can't even see it. It comes up pretty clear on the cameras. I'm really zoomed in, but seeing it from above from the eye, you really got to quite look quite closely. So uh, it is a nice kit nonetheless, though, it does add that bit of interest and atmosphere, I think. So the depot is I'm more or less happy with for now. It still isn't quite there yet. I still want to add a few things like some drainage covers for the sewage, etc. I've also got a order coming from Model U, mostly concerning figures, so I can add a bit more life into the depot that way and with some other detailing bits as well. Um, possibly gonna add some more lighting, particularly at the back of the depot where the derelict part is. Also add some more cars with a possibly one just leaving the depot as if the driver's just finishing his, or just finished his shift and is on his way home. So any anything like that really, plus any other little bits and pieces I can think of. Any ideas you have yourselves, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm always quite open to hear what others think and what ideas other people have. So that more or less brings an end to the video and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Again, please feel free to leave any suggestions in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care, happy modeling and stay safe. Bye.